What up, what up? I'm your host, Fallen Christ, and this is your weekly wake up call. Don't forget that you can follow me on YouTube at the name Z O E F R E A K, the number nine, the number five. Uh, don't forget that you can subscribe to this channel to constantly get these videos as they are uploaded. Um, don't forget that you can share these videos with your family, friends, Facebook, Twitter, whatever social media website, with your enemies, classmates, co workers. Don't forget that you can also like us on Facebook at the name The Watchman for Christ. It's a page that myself and the username Watchman118 share. We post different links of our Facebook on uh, excuse me on our of our YouTube videos to Facebook. Um, we also post different scriptures, news articles, anything that has to do with current world events on a spiritual or religious nature that have um, comparities or comparisons, excuse me, to prophecy and things that are warning us about the final events of the things that are going to take place in the Bible so that we are more aware, uh, so that we can be ready daily, so that we can understand God's purpose and mission for his people. Today, we want to talk about something that we all fall victim to or have fall, fallen victim to um, compromises of some point, um, not just any compromises, but silent compromises, you know, the compromises that you make without actually having to say anything because you don't want anyone or anything said to you. So let's look at some meanings of some words here. First, the word silent. The dictionary defines silent as not speaking or making noise, tending not to talk much, not having or making any sound or noise. Then we move on to the word compromise. Compromise is defined as a way of reaching agreement in which each person or group gives up something that was wanted in order to to end an argument or dispute. A change that makes something worse and that is not done for a good reason. Silent and compromise. When we look in the Bible, we're going to look at some of the some examples of people that made silent compromises or a compromise in general, first we're going to look at King Saul, his silent compromise, and his disobedience to a direct command from God. If we look at 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 3, this is what God commanded Samuel. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. We read on in verses 8 and 9 of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 15 and it says, And he, Saul, took Agog, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agog and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatlings and the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vile and refuse, that they destroyed utterly silently compromised himself to take the best didn't even say anything the best didn't want to dispute it with the people he was the king because he didn't want to cause an uprising he wanted the people to like him he took the best of what the Amalekites had and the excuse he used was because they wanted to sacrifice it to God but God said, destroy everything, everyone. I want it all wiped out. I don't want anything left behind. No stone unturned. Silent compromise. 
we move on to a rather more known compromise that was made. Specifically, the judgment hall of Pilate, the crucifixion of Christ Jesus. We turn to John chapter 19 and verse 12, and I read for your hearing. And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him being Christ. For, you know, he found no fault in him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou, Pilate, let this man go, being Christ, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. So Pilate, being the governor of that sect of Rome over the Jews who desired to have Christ crucified, judged Christ and said he found no fault or no guile, no guilt in this man. He was innocent, but not wanting, wanting to stir up the people in fear of an uprising and it getting back to Caesar. He was afraid because someone yelled out, if you don't do what we ask, if you let this man go, you are not Caesar's friend. So what did he do? He silently compromised. Now we read in the scriptures, it tells us in James chapter 4 and verse 17, Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is a sin. Both of these men in these examples that I gave you, they knew the right thing. Saul knew he was God's king. He knew the Lord. He knew that when God commanded something, he meant it and it ought to be kept. Regardless of what the people wanted. Regardless if they had nice sheep or fat sheep and it could offer up a great sacrifice or they had great riches. They had nice material things and worldly gain and wealth. It doesn't matter if he wanted to, I want to be a good king and spare this king's life and show that I'm merciful to the people. God said, destroy them. It doesn't matter if you don't want to upset Caesar. If you don't want to upset the people, the populace, if you know that someone is innocent, Pilate, why would you allow for this man's life to be taken? That makes you just as guilty as they are. Silently compromising. But when we know something is right and we choose not to do it because we don't want others to look at us in a different light, the Bible says, brothers and sisters, that we're sinning because we're silently compromising. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 5 and verse 29, we ought to obey God rather than man. Never are we to allow societal pressure to outweigh the word of God. Public opinion is like the tide of the sea is high one moment and low the next. Don't lose your life over the opinions of others, but rather focus on the one whose opinion will be the only one that truly matters in the end. Brothers and sisters, I appeal to you today that there is nothing more important in, life, in this life than hearing and obeying the word of our Lord and Savior. Amen. I must remind you of one thing, that no matter whether we accept this or not, the truth always stays true. God bless. It's time to wake up.